Hi guys, this is Wave618. It's the 9th of May 2019. We've just gone 5 p.m. BST. All right, so in today's video, essentially what we're going to cover, I'm going to readdress my long term frame bias, which we discussed in my last video. And obviously, during that video, I explained that we were at a very pivotal point, and the following price action would be key for me determining which way my long term, buy, uh, my long -term bias would swing. So we're going to address that in today's video. On top of that, we're going to talk about this short time frame count. And you can see we're, we're reaching a lot of overhead resistance at that point. So what I really, really want to discuss is whether we're going to pull back at this point that we're at right now, or whether we can be expected to reach the top of this resistance zone before pulling back. So those are the key points that we'll be discussing on Bitcoin. On top of that, I will be addressing the Ripple chart also. This is what my Discord members had voted for me to analyze, and we've been looking at that closely. So I thought I'd address it in this video. All right, so if that sounds interesting, then stay tuned. Alright guys, so let's get started. So I mentioned that we were going to focus on my long term frame bias initially. So this is really going on from my last video where I said we're at a very key level and I'm just going to pull up the BLX chart because I've got my pitchfork on this chart. And I mentioned that this pitchfork was what I was looking out for to see whether it would break. On top of that, the 50 week moving average was another key indicator for me as a marker of downward trend. Now in the past, no matter how many waves down Bitcoin has had, it's always respected the pitchfork. Um, and so the break of this pitchfork for me is very, very significant and tells me that the, the bears are losing control of this market. Um, so my long term frame count was as a WXY. So this was W, X was this descending triangle. So that's A, B, C, D, and E. Then we had three waves down to make our Y wave. All right, so as I say, I explained this at length in my last video. So if you really want to understand this long term frame count, uh, as well as looking at the count from the Genesis back in 2011, um, then take a look at my last video where we go into it in a lot more detail. Um, but in today's video, I want to show you how since my last video, we've broken rather convincingly above this upper warning line here. For me, this is a bullish sign and um, it tells me certainly that the bears are losing control in this market. On top of that, I'm sure you're all aware, it's, a lot of people have been talking about it. It's the 50 week simple moving average. Obviously, I don't trade simply based on moving averages but they are an excellent guide of sentiment. Um, so it's a supporting indicator, essentially. It's not something I use to trade, but once the 50, the 50 week simple moving average gets broken, price often starts to trend. So we'll see what happens. We've clearly seen a break above it, a little bit of resistance initially, and then we saw price break through. Um, so again, another bullish indicator for me, and that tied in with the, the upper warning line being broken. All right, so for that reason, for that reason alone, uh, well, as well as the fact that we've seen a nice completion here, and I mentioned in my last video, supposing this is a wave four on the larger time frame that's looking at the count from the Genesis back in 2011, then if this is to be a way forward, it does seem to have completed in terms of price retracement and also time that has passed. And again, I addressed that in detail in my last video. The problem is obviously if this is a major wave two, another wave four, in which case it could come a lot lower or at least make new lows. However, if that were to happen, I was expecting it to happen at 5,800 because there were plenty of reasons for that to happen. There was the upper warning line being hit. There was the 50 week simple moving average being hit. And there was a clear uh, 1.618 extension of the third wave of the first wave here to show a completion of an ABC or a WXY. 
So lots and lots of reasons from a TA point of view to support a downward move at this level. The fact that they were all ignored for me is a very concerning sign for the bears and shows that the bulls are gaining traction at this point. And yeah, for that reason, I'm now going to start labeling these waves with numbers rather than letters to signify uh, an impulsive count. And you have to admit that there is some price action in here that is looking very impulsive. And I'm going to address that short term count shortly. So just going back to our original chart. So I mentioned that we're coming into this overhead resistance here now. Now this blue block I believe is very significant. It's marking out some very key levels. You can see the bottom line of this block often acting as support multiple times um, as well as resistance here. And then the top line again acting as good resistance on numerous occasions. Yeah, And the way, an easy way to find and mark out this block um, is if you just pull up volume at price or your volume profiles, whatever you want to call it. And the way I look at it is I go off the low volume nodes surrounding the major spike in volume. So here you offer, your major spike is usually in the middle at the 50% level um, within this order block. And then what you look for is where price or not price, but volume suddenly drops off. So I was using this level here. You can see this spike here and then just after it, a massive low volume node there and likewise if we look at the bottom of this rectangle big low volume node here essentially low volume means the price spends very little time at these levels and the reason is that is because they're resistance and support levels so price tends to bounce off them rather than consolidate the high volume nodes is where price consolidates and will generally stay there for a while uh, so that's typically in the middle of your your block your block of orders essentially so that's how I've marked out these levels and you can see right now prices come up to the bottom of this block of data all right so we can take off the volume for the time being and now let's just look at it at, from an Elliott wave point of view so let's look at this short term move up so I think we can probably go on the four hourly it's probably a good time frame to see this better. Okay, so for me, this was looking all pretty impulsive up to here. And so if this is our first wave, second wave all looking very corrective, let's extend, do our fib extension. So there is, we've obviously surpassed the 1.618 extension, and so the next obvious target would be the 2.618. Let's put a little um price tag at that level so it's around 6200 this point 6270 roughly yeah um so that's one possible target of resistance uh, for, just from an Elliott wave point of view now if that's our in fact let's just label it so it's a bit clearer if that's our wave one two three up to here, four, five, even higher. So these are just randomly plotted, but the wave four and five, but the wave three could certainly perhaps come up to the 6,200. Let's look at the sub wave count for wave three now. So personally, I would start the count from here because that's where I see five waves up. Yeah, obviously this low here on Bitstamp doesn't come lower than here. And so it is, you, you would feel inclined to start your count here. However, I'm looking at this as more of a truncation of this corrective pattern down. And I'm starting my count from here. And in doing so, you've got your wave one, two, three, four, five, up to here, fib extension, bring it across. So you extend it from where it comes down to. This is probably the end of your wave two here. Again, a truncation, probably because of the fact that bulls are taking control of the market. You're starting to see these truncations now. And so I'd say this is the wave one, two, and then three probably is at this level, the 1.618. This is a slight spike above. 
So I'd probably label the subword count as a one, two, three up to here. And following that, we've seen what looks like a running flat. So this would be an A, B wave is three waves up, and then we have C coming down to make wave four. So let's just label that. So we've got wave one, two, three, sorry, three, four, and then five could come up to around here, as we said. And let's just change the degree of that. So make it minor. Okay. Yeah, so we've got this sub um, subwave count of the wave three now. So we've got the wave one, two, three, running flat four, and then five. Again, a running flat, that is telling you the bulls are taking control of the market. Okay. Yeah, because typically wave fours will retrace, you know, retrace rather than having, you know, higher highs during the price action of the correction. When you see higher highs during that price action of the correction, it's telling you that the, you know, there's something going on here, the, the bulls are taking control. So this, this, so this is the count I would use. Now, how can we target where wave five would finish? Now, often you can look for a one-to-one -one relationship with wave one and wave five. However, it looks like we've actually surpassed that already. So if you can just see here, that's our wave one, extend it from the bottom of wave four. Our one-to-one -one would be at 5,800. And as we all know, price did not want to go down from 5,800. We are propagating higher. We've actually reached the 1.236 so far. Okay, but my preferred way of targeting a wave five uh, finish is by looking at waves one to three, which is to here, and looking for a 0 0.618 extension from the end of wave four. And it brings us to our 62.46. And I, what I like about this is it's offering confluence with this 62.70 uh, level which was the 2.618 extension of this wave here so one two and three was up to 62.70 that was the 2.618 extension of this okay so we've got a confluence of uh, Fibonacci extensions at around 62.50 to 63.00 around that around that level and you can see we're approaching the middle of this block of data which is that high volume node I think the middle is around 6400 so around those ranges ranging from 6250 up to 6400 is where I would be looking for probably um, a bit of a turnaround in price so yeah let's just clean this up now We take these labels off. So yeah, that's from a short term point of view, that's how I'm looking at it. We had some obviously interesting news come in recently um, about Binance getting hacked and then the CEO, uh, CZ basically saying that he was gonna refund anyone who lost money. So it's hard to determine whether that was a, a sign of strength for Bitcoin and blockchain uh, or whether it was a weakness because of the fact that it got hacked. The fact that people ended up getting their money back, I suppose that is generally seen as a positive thing. But essentially, it was negative media because obviously this $42 um, million dollar hack, uh, you would expect price to come down. Now, the fact that price continued to go up, you can argue that that, that news was just to create uh, liquidity for smart money to, to buy in, okay? So obviously when negative media comes out, the average retail, retail trader will be selling and that allows uh, the smart money to come in and mop up such positions and with their long positions in anticipation of further moves up. So it could be the fact that price didn't come down with negative media suggests that again, it's another bullish indication uh, supported by the, the smart money. So that's another way I'm looking at it. Now, in terms of what happens next, so. As I say, this could be a one, two, three up to around here, and then you'd expect a wave four retracement. Now let's just say wave four. So where would it retrace? Typically a 38.2 retracement. So wave three starts at this level, 
and let's say we come up to 6270 roughly uh, so you're retracing back to around 5000 or 5100 here and that would be in keeping with the wave 4 of the preceding impulse which is this uh, wave 4 here so typically a wave 4 will retrace to the uh, the way for the preceding impulse so yeah you'd be looking for a pullback to around here now there's obviously it's hard to predict exactly where what price will do over the next week or so and the reason for that is we've got some very interesting news coming up and that's with consensus so it's a very important event consensus it's where top people in the industry discuss about progress and their plans for the future with regards to um, to Bitcoin and um, and crypto in general and obviously it becomes more interesting as time goes on because we're all aware of the fact that uh, crypto is becoming a lot more incorporated into everyday society uh, and so every year you're likely to hear big names um, talking about their plans for you know applying crypto uh, on a larger scale within society so very interesting now what you could see is obviously if some really positive news comes out this could just shoot up and we could fly past the 2.618 extension and head for the 4.236 for example certainly possible there's nothing to suge suggest that it can't happen uh, however with this from a TA point of view it's looking quite hyper extended at the moment approaching the 2.618 so from a probability point of view I wouldn't I certainly would not be looking to jump in right now as I say personally what I'm waiting for is a pullback um, to around the 0 0.382 level and then I'll be looking for potential long positions so the key message here is that the way I'm looking at it is from a high time frame bias point of view I'm looking at it from a, a, a bullish perspective um, but that said, because we've moved up quite significantly, I'm waiting for retracements before looking to, to get in. And any positions that I do get into, obviously I'm looking for positions from a short term point of view, maybe swing trading. But I will also be considering those position trades, more of an investment type of trade. Um, if, if obviously consensus comes out with some, for some reason, some very negative media, which I don't see happening, then you could see a massive sell-off, but I can't see how that is going to happen. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what I wanted to update in this video. So as I say, high time frame bias has been switched uh, for the reasons I've mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, that's my Elliott Wave count for this short term price action. And on top of that, there is a very interesting pitch for it to look at. So. If this for our wave three, so what we'll do pitchfork magnet tool start account from the bottom of wave three. First wave in is our second pivot, third wave in, sorry, second. So your first pivot is at the, the, the start of the wave, second pivot at the end of the first wave and then your third pivot at the end of the second wave. Now, it's important to make sure these are accurate. So that one's on point. This one, that's better. That one's fine. All right, so what happened? So this is um, an original pitchfork, which we use for impulsive price action. Again, it's supporting the fact that this is impulsive. So what happened after we drew our th first three pivots? You get your tool, you get your, your five lines, what happened? Price drifted off to the lower warning line, hovered against it, and then a, a huge move up. And where did it come to? The medium line. How many times did it test it? About five or six times it tested it. A little bit of a pullback. Where did it pull back to? Lower warning line. Oh, uh, sorry, lower medium line. Hovered across that. Retested our lower warning line. People accumulated again. Why? Because we've got the lower warning line and the completion of a wave four running flat. And where have we come up to? The upper me uh, lower median line. Now, there is a reason you would have expected a bit of a pullback at this level. We've hit the um, lower median line and we're also testing this horizontal level. Okay? The fact that we haven't is again showing strength. 
So I thought this was a very interesting way of looking at this move here. Clearly very, very impulsive. For me, if this was to be labeled as a corrective wave, for example, a A, B, C, then really it should have turned back by now. As I say, 5,800 was, it, there were so many reasons, so many excuses for the bears to get aggressive at that point, 5,800. So many reasons. And the fact that they lost that battle, for me, that is significant. And that's why I'm labeling this as impulsive. Um, so I'm hoping I've made my point clear uh, with this video. And uh, I think we'll leave it there for Bitcoin just because I think I'll be repeating myself otherwise. Now, I did mention that we'll look at Ripple. For my Discord members, we've been looking at, um, closely looking at Ripple. Uh, it clearly won the votes for the chart to be covered. So let's just pull up Ripple. Uh, all right, so first of all, we'll look at the long-term count for Ripple. I always like to look at the long-term counts. Reason being is it puts the chart into context and tells you exactly what wave we're in at present. So the way I've been looking at it, I, I can count five, or not five, but uh, three waves up to the top here. So this would be our wave one. Impulsive looking price action. Following on from there, we've seen this you know, very steady uh, retracement, looking very corrective. And yeah, the way it, this was all looking probably like a, a WXY, with this being W, three waves down. So in itself, it's a WXY. So it's a WXY to make the W. And then your X wave is three waves up to here. And then your Y wave is three waves down to here. Again, it's truncated. And you do, you do tend to see this in Ripple. We'll discuss this shortly. But you get these truncated uh, final wave retracements which give this very curved out bottom appearance um, so actually if you look very closely at this low here you'll find that it is slightly lower than these here but I, you can see looking at it macroscopically it's pretty much a double bottom and suggesting truncation from there the way I'd count this move up would be a one two three four five to make our major wave three and again truncation with the wave four of this wave three so you can see w three waves down x is three waves up and then you get your three waves down to make your double bottom again okay now it's interesting these this truncation and these double bottoms because i think we're going to see a very similar play out in what's happening in the price action here so if this is our long time frame count, one, two, three, and then we've got our wave four developing here. Now, this pitchfork uh, was uh, identified by one of my Discord members, so congratulations to them. It's, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And this is just illustrates the reason that I'm so happy that I joined social media to you know uh, network with you guys, because I can't, apply my strategy to every single chart um, and so when you guys pull out these pitchforks on charts that I've not even you know had a chance to look at uh, I think it's brilliant because that's shared amongst us as a group and it allows us to take advantage advantages of the best opportunities out there so this is essentially an inside pitchfork and then the way this was drawn so you can see from the, the top of wave three you can see three waves down. So from here to here to here. So that's a WXY. And the X wave is a running flat. So you've got your A, B, C. Okay. And the way you draw your, um, your pitchfork, this is an inside pitchfork, by the way. So your first wave down to here. And then your second wave ends here. So that's how you draw your pivots. First pivot, second pivot, third pivot. And... Um, yeah, this pitchfork of all the others in the, uh, of all the other pitchforks, this one seems to be holding the best. You can see price, you know, hovering around the median line, coming down to the lower median line, coming up to almost as far as the upper warning line, and then just kind of sneaking under the upper warning line here. And what I'm looking at, you can see this curved out bottom developing. 
we could see a double bottom as uh, as I mentioned on numerous occasions ripple likes to do so if this was our w x y i call this x and this is our z wave and i do think we might just see price come down retest this low here which is was which is what acts as a support here and then we could potentially start to see this upper warning line break it's when this upper warning line breaks that i'll be looking for long positions at present i, I think that we could come down lower and so better trade entries are available as time goes on i believe that's where i'm looking at it and um, and it kind of ties in with bitcoin which is also looking uh, bullish at present but is not quite ready to go up so bitcoin looks like it could retrace quite a bit more whilst ripple looks like it might just go sideways and then they could start to go up around the same time uh, this black box so the way i color coordinate my indicators is the black box is the, on the monthly chart so if you pull up let's just pull up the monthly so i was essentially looking at this uh, block of data here so i marked out you can see this red candle yeah so we look at the high and low of the bodies of, uh, of the body of that so the open and the close rather and we, if we pull it across we can if you zoom in on the daily you'll see that this acts this as resistance on numerous occasions this acts as support on numerous occasions and pulling it across you can see it's now acting as support and this is where i think price may come down to again before we go higher and the last thing to really discuss is obviously these two blue lines that i've drawn this is just a channel that i've drawn connecting these highs that's the top of wave one and wave three and extending that extrapolating it from where wave two retraced to and there's a good chance that price may retest this this uh, blue line to form to appreciate the channel and um, that said i think it might start its move up before it tests the blue line okay so it might start to move up um, before it tests it so yeah, that's the way I'm looking at Ripple, exciting times. There's good correlation with Bitcoin in terms of the eventual, what looks to me like a likely move up is going to happen at around the same time as with Bitcoin. So two very interesting charts I thought I'd share with you. And uh, yeah, I hope you appreciate the analysis. I'll be having a chat with my Discord members about this chart a bit more, see what they think about it. And um, yeah, if you like the content, guys, please uh, leave a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, any comments, any queries, just stick it in, uh, you know, under the video. And I think we'll wrap it up there. All right, guys, take it easy. See you later.